Hi there. I'm very excited to uh, start this uh, big data uh, special webinar. It's about today, it's about Piranha vs Mammoth, predator appliances that chew up big data. Hold on, it's going to be fun. So what are we going to talk today? It's uh, about appliances. Uh, you know, you may think they should be small and quick. We're going to talk about the six types of big data appliances, uncover the main players, uh, talk about which big data appliance should you use, and then dig uh, into the challenges, pitfalls, and winning the big data game. How do we do it? And uh, where is all this leading you to? It's important also. So, appliances are small and quick, right? You know, this kind of router, uh, whatever. Well, in some cases, but big data appliances can be big, they can be huge. Uh, take a look at this uh, Quantum Store Next uh, M330 uh, appliance, which we're going to talk a bit about uh, later on. So, what makes a great appliance? It's a basic question. And... But first, uh, let's get to know you. Uh, I'd like to know a bit more about uh, what you're interested in. So let's launch uh, the first uh, uh, vote, which is how deep have you dived into uh, big data? So it's, uh, you know, just started to learn it, learning a lot, nothing uh, done yet. Planning a big data a big data project, running a big data operation, and the last one is I don't get it yet. What's all the fuss about it? So I'm I'm gonna give you a few more seconds to vote. It's great. We have uh, almost uh, fifty percent uh, people voting. Please uh, vote. Yeah, great. Almost done. Okay, I'm going to give you a few more seconds and then we're going to continue. Okay, we're done voting. Um, now let's see uh, what are the results. It's about 33% uh, split into just starting to learn about it, learning a lot, nothing done yet, and planning a big data project. That's, that almost matches what's... Uh, happening in the real world. Many people are interested in, in big data, but uh, just a few are starting to do something about it. So this is the poll. Let's, uh, and we talked about the results. So what makes a great appliance? Okay, you need to, uh, you need to have the appliance do its, its primary job. That's, uh, and you don't want it to be complicated. You don't want it to do much more than it needs to do because you don't want to spend too much time learning uh, stuff you don't really need to do. You need a quick and simple setup, you know, and, and you know, for software or even hardware-based appliances, you want to know that updates will come in and be implemented uh, quickly and easily. Now, talking about big data, it's usually associated with running many instances of uh, the same appliance. So you need to have easy control of all those instances. And then uh, you want uh, the appliance to require uh, simple uh, infrastructure requirements. It could be disk space, it could be the, the hardware pl platform it runs on, it could be uh, memory, uh, you know, anything like this. Now, you want it to have a reliable underlying system like the operating system or the hardware and basically you kind of expect it uh, without even talking about it. What else? You're uh, invited to uh, post in the questions, uh, anything, any notes you, you'd like to uh, add to this uh, criteria. So, what's the most important job for a great appliance. What do you think? Now, it could be, and I'm going to launch the, uh, the poll in a minute. Let's do it. Um, okay. 
So what's the most important job for a great appliance? Could be, does the job on time? We mentioned it. Quick and easy, um, simple uh, setup and updates. Easy control of many instances. Simple infrastructure requirements and reliable uh, underlying system. Please vote. Um, whatever you think is important for you, or the most important thing. I know you can't uh, vote for more than one, I guess, but uh, that's fine. Just uh, hit the vote button and uh, I'm going to close this uh, voting in uh, about a few seconds. I, I hope, I really hope you don't have any challenges uh, using the, the vote system. I, I, I don't recall using it uh, um, as a participant, so <laughs> I don't know how it goes for you. Uh, but I can see uh, almost 50% uh, done. Okay, let's go on. We have lots of, uh, to talk about. And the results are 60% says it's important for me to have it uh, do its job, no more, no less. 20% say easy control of one or many instances, and that's, that's smart. And then simple infrastructure requirements. This is important, uh, especially for uh, if you want to just, uh, you know, start, uh, start the process of doing big data. Okay, so we talked about the results. Now, what is the job for your big data appliance? So we're not talking just about an appliance, it's a big data appliance. Here's what I kind of uh, learned. You want to be able to extend your existing data warehouse or BI solution, if you have any. You want to discover new insights, new stuff about your customers, your clients, your users, your products, and then use it to increase innovation. You want to run a pilot, uh, you just sometimes you just want to run a pilot and see if big data it is worth uh, doing it. Process more data, faster, cheaper. Uh, you may want to have static, just one-time analysis of the data, or you may have you may want to have continuous analysis of the data, and it may might make a big difference uh, regarding the solution you use. Then flexibility and lock-in prevention. You don't want to put uh, lots of efforts and then when you want to move, share, uh, transform this data into a newer system, another system, you want, don't want to uh, be stuck in Hadoop. The open source solution for big data is uh, it's a basic one, but it can help you do it. So this is one of the solutions. Now, turn operational data into assets, which is kind of what Data Warehouse is meant to do, but it has uh, um, a specific uh, effect we're going to talk about. Uh, break data silos, okay? So you want to have all the data uh, available to everybody who's relevant. And then you may have considerations sticking to a, an existing data-related vendors you have. It could be the storage, the database, or whatever, and it may affect how much your big data appliance uh, works well for you. Now, let's reveal the six types of big data appliances. Okay, so this is what I saw when I was looking at the big data appliance uh, landscape. Uh, you may have duped the engine, software-based appliance, and it may have just be compatible to Hadoop. Then you have a solution uh, which is data warehouse hardware engine and then it has API to Hadoop or any kind of analytics uh, other software. Uh, the third one is hardware storage only. It just does the storage for the big data appliance. And then you have software based appliance which is compatible to Hadoop. I kind of um, neglected it a bit because it's, it's, um, it's not a big uh, um, category. Uh, not many solutions like this that I noticed. Then you have cloud-based virtual machines and using a Hadoop engine. So it's kind of like the Hadoop engine software-based appliance, but it has a specific taste to it. And, uh, and then you have cloud-based API with hooks to Hadoop. So you don't, in this last option, you don't have access to the actual virtual machines or machines doing the work for you just have access um, 
um, to actions through an API and you can't tell it how much you want to have it scale up or down. Uh, it's kind of not actually an appliance, but I, I still included it. Okay, so what type of big data appliance will you use? I, this is the last vote, so, you know, last chance. Let's see. Uh, we just talked about it. So what type of big data appliance will you use? Could be Hadoop engine or compatible software based. Could be data warehouse, hardware engine with an API to Hadoop uh, or analytics. And then it could be uh, hardware storage only or cloud-based virtual machines with Hadoop engine included and then cloud-based API with hooks to Hadoop. Now let's see what you're voting. Um, okay. Okay, very good. It's uh, your last chance to say something about... Uh, well, actually, you can, you can post questions. I, I can see... Um, uh, okay, I can see it sounds good. I'm glad. It's not a question, but I'm very glad to see it. What's happening with the votes? So, cool. We're nearly done. Let's give it a few more seconds. Okay. Okay, very good. Let's move on. So, we just mentioned it. And let's see what the, the results are. Uh, for the big data uh, appliance you would use. Okay, so we've got 40% saying um, I'll probably use Data Warehouse Hardware Engine with that has an API to Hadoop um, slash analytics. So at least 40% of the people here on, on, on this special webinar uh, ha already have Data Warehouse uh, hardware uh, solution running inside or plan to use it very soon 20% say hardware storage only that's what they're gonna use and then 20% say cloud-based virtual machines plus Hadoop engine and the last one it's it's surprising it 20% say we're gonna use cloud cloud-based API with hooks to Hadoop that's very interesting nobody mentioned um, using Hadoop engine or com compatible software based that's very interesting. Okay, so uh, let's go on uh, with our webinar. So let's uncover some of the main players. There are lots of, and uh, but those are the ones we're focusing. So the first category, Hadoop Engine, software-based appliances. You can see uh, Oracle, Cloudera, Hortonworks, which is like uh, similar to Cloudera and have, they have uh, cooperation with VMware, Microsoft, Teradata, don't worry about Cloudera, they also have lots of partnerships, major ones. And then you have MapR, available on Amazon uh, EMR, uh, and Google Computer Engine Virtual Machines. So the, 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 this is in, in a software implementation of Hadoop Engine running on uh, virtual machines provided by Amazon and Google. The last one is the storage, uh, the Red Hat Storage 2.0 Beta, and it's kind of compatible for Apache uh, Hadoop, um, and we'll, I think we'll mention it. It's not uh, very clear to me yet. I may be wrong, uh, but uh, okay. So Oracle Big Data Appliance, what does it do? So the end goal is for, for this appliance is to get data into Oracle database uh, the latest edition is 12, but it's 11. And include, it includes open source Hadoop, uh, which now is actually Cloudera. This is one of the partnerships. And, and then it has uh, the Oracle NoSQL database. Now, what this, what this means is uh, Hadoop or Cloudera, many other editions of Hadoop include uh, the HDFS, the Hadoop uh, um, file system, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of a database infrastructure. So you can put your uh, big data uh, in bits into the HDFS, and then you can run queries, uh, even SQL-like queries. You you know, uh, running on this uh, HDFS file system. And Oracle, Oracle's Big Data Appliance uh, supports this, but 
it also provides you with an uh, option of using the uh, Java-based uh, database uh, it has, which is also a NoSQL database similar to what HDFS is. Um, although some people don't want to use uh, the basic bare HDFS, they use other um, solutions uh, um, than that. Um, it could, could be MongoDB or uh, other solutions. Now, Oracle Loader for Hadoop is included in this appliance as well. And then open source distribution of R, which is uh, the reduce um, um, uh, option, and w which al you know allows you uh, process uh, it's it's Hadoop solution of, of uh, processing uh, the data, and then is the, uh, the underlying uh, uh, infrastructure is Oracle Linux of course and Oracle Java Hotspot Virtual, which is Java runtime actually. So that's that's the that's what Oracle Big Data Appliance is about. Now, we to talk uh, about a bit about the uh, uh, data integrator and Hadoop API included in, in, in you know, Oracle solution. So it allows you to easily uh, upload data to HDFS uh, and uh, automate ma uh, MapReduce. It can do some validation of constraints of uh, of uh, the data hives, which are the data buckets uh, uh, existing after you upload data to Hadoop, and it's kind of uh, could be important because uh, it can save you some time um, uh, when you run the the map reduce jobs. Uh, so you can add data to hives uh, more easily, and then uh, of course uh, upload to Oracle and and vice versa. And it also allows you query hives using Oracle's SQL. I, I'm not sure it's fully uh, the full set of Oracle's uh, SQL is supported, but it's kind of, you know, supports uh, at least the basic functions. So it's convenient. Uh, Hadoop implementation has its own SQL-like uh, syntax option, but still this is, uh, you may like uh, uh, Oracle's implementation better. Okay. so. How does uh, Oracle's uh, solution uh, uh, rate? So, uh, doing the job, uh, we talk about next slide, and then uh, quick and simple setup. I, s I wrote medium because Oracle can be uh, uh, can can require some learning curve for some people, uh, and then or in, in some situations. Um, and then easy control of one or many instances, uh, I guess that's fine because you're using Oracle's uh, infrastructure, uh, managing databases and so on. Uh, reliable underlying system, that's fine. I, I don't mention, okay, so um, and then what else? Great if you've got Oracle already, of course. And uh, it can be uh, interlinked with Oracle's hardware solution or Oracle's uh, Exadata slash data warehouse so it's another uh, benefit using this appliance now uh, so it can do I'm not listing here all the 11 um, uh, items on the what uh, big data appliance uh, is required to do but uh, I'm just mentioning mentioning um, I'm saying it can do most of the job requirements m uh, mentioned in the 11 uh, items list. And then I'm mentioning exceptions, and I'm doing it for all the other appliances as well. So it's the same format. So uh, process data faster looks like uh, cheaper, not sure. Oracle can be uh, quite uh, uh, costly for some people. <clears throat> and then uh, flexibility and locking medium because it's kind of using Hadoop, but you may get, uh, 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 you know, hooked onto the specific uh, special add-ons that Oracle has, and then it may lock you in. Okay, now another uh, software-based appliance, Cloudera. Uh, I have a special uh, webinar on specifically on Cloudera. Um, you can see it in in the attachment links, uh, but then it's it's kind of uh, they take uh, most of the Hadoop-based uh, software, uh, um, um, you know, uh, packages. They make sure it work. They work well. They test them, 
and, and they ship them as, as a Cloudera version of Hadoop. Now, HDFS is the NoSQL database within this one, and uh, you get a management console for uh, node deployment. Uh, you get up to 50 free uh, nodes in a Cloudera uh, cluster, and it may change, of course, over time. And then if you have a, if you're paying customer, then you have uh, support and you, you, you have, uh, you, you can add hundreds and, and I think up to 3000 uh, uh, nodes to a Cloudera cluster. So, and then uh, IBM um, and uh, Oracle and uh, at least one or two more uh, big players have, uh, have, uh, cooperation with uh, Cloudera and they actually ship Cloudera uh, within their uh, big data solution. So it's another uh, kind of benefit. Okay, Cloudera um, has uh, special add-ons, uh, very interesting. Um, you know, it's, uh, um, you have the list here with SQL, the Hive is the SQL-like language support. And then HBase is, uh, it allows you to create and query um, tables. Um, it creates a table view for your big data um, uh, files that you upload to HDFS. And then you have machine learning algorithms, uh, which might help you analyze the data. And, and then uh, PIG is a high, high level data flow language. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, higher level than just SQL. Um, and of course you have integration with SQL databases to upload and, and uh, download data, vice versa. Uh, you can deploy uh, Apache Hadoop in, in the cloud and we'll talk a bit about it uh, later on. And then you have a management interface. Now, how does uh, Cloudera uh, stack up? And I'm going to make it faster because none of you uh, voted for using a software-based appliance. So <laughs> You know, so um, uh, basically Cloudera does the job uh, very well. Uh, and then quick and easy updates, I'm not sure about it, if it works, uh, uh, f you know, smoothly. And uh, no delays doing its job. I'm not sure about how, how fast it scales. You'll see another software-based appliance um, that have some added benefits uh, beyond what Cloudera offers but it's easy to use it uh, uh, as uh, starting a pilot. Just you upload it uh, into a Linux uh, uh, distribution and you start using it. It's great for old hardware, uh, if, if you have uh, anyone, uh, any, any uh, old hardware laying, lying around. So, can do most of the job requirements, as I said, and some um, exceptions, um, you know, it's cheaper, but sometimes, uh, cheap hardware can be very costly. Uh, you know, electricity, cooling, sometimes um, maintenance. So uh, cheap hardware doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cost you less than uh, newer hardware. Okay. Now, um, it, okay. So it's got an endorsements. You can read it later on in details. Okay. Map R has some special features which I think are, are worth noticing. So uh, even if you don't use a software-based appliance, you still may want to ensure you have this kind of functionality in your solution. So it can, uh, it can uh, give priority for small jobs to finish uh, uh, quicker instead of just uh, uh, staying there in the queue along with the uh, longer jobs. You can mount uh, the HDFS over NFS uh, over NFS could be important. I'm not sure how much strategic it is. And then uh, uh, once you use NFS, you can basically stream data, which is uh, stream additional new data into your HDFS uh, uh, big data storage, which is not very simple using uh, a regular HDFS where you usually wa need to uh, you know, upload new files, but in this case, you can basically simply uh, stream uh, data into a specific file and add to it. Uh, you can mirror and, and create snapshots and, and uh, go back to specific points in time, which can be 
uh, can save you lots of time and resources as you can uh, go back and forth in your uh, big data, uh, um, you know, map reduce analysis uh, phases. It can save you time. Okay, and they say it's uh, kind of at least for some for some factors three times faster than other solutions. I, I can't say for sure if it's across the board for all features, but uh, it's kind of faster than other solutions. Um, and then it points to specific uh, uh, lacks that Hadoop implementation has where you need a name node that manages all the cluster nodes. And if this one fails, you may be in trouble and MapR um, uh, claims to have a uh, high availability for this. Let's go uh, faster now. The second category of, uh, of uh, big data appliances is data warehouse uh, uh, hardware engine with an API to Hadoop and analytics. You can see here Teradata, Astaire, EMC, IBM, uh, Neteza, uh, EMC was uh, Greenplum, uh, Cloudera, Hadoop integrated into IBM Neteza, uh, IBM Big Data Solutions Suite, uh, and Cray. Uh, okay. So we're focusing about uh, on Teradata Astaire. So uh, it's kind of Hadoop is uh, is not in the front. Uh, Map reduces the most important uh, feature here, uh, and it's uh, you know bec the well once you have and you know how to use your data warehouse uh, solution. You kind of you don't need to to uh, know Hadoop because uh, this data warehouse tool will will uh, will do all the conversions and interactions uh, with Hadoop, so it saves you time and effort. Uh, multiple pr uh, pr massive par uh, parallel processing is already built in as part of the data warehouse, uh, while Hadoop is kind of just starting. Uh, it's it's very powerful, but it's just starting uh, in this arena and it's more kind of uh, many nodes rather than uh, um, maybe traditional MPP. Now reli reliability and performance is handled by, uh, by uh, the data, uh, the, the hardware, so it's kind of uh, very powerful. You have connectivity um, uh, through JDBC, ODBC, uh, and, and here you also have connectivity to Cloudera, so if you have a Cloudera installation, it, this uh, Teradata Astaire can, can uh, communicate with it. And then, you know, price is high, uh, platform, you can see here. And uh, let's see what's up with uh, its rating. So it does, uh, regarding the specific job of uh, a big data appliance, we'll see in the next slide. And then uh, does uh, the job, uh, excuse me, Quick and simple setup, not sure. It's a data warehouse solution. Once you have it in place, that's fine. But, you know, it takes some effort. Easy control of one of many instances, yes. Part of uh, the data warehouse solution, reliable, no delays doing the job, that's fine. Now, specifically, it can do most of the job requirements uh, for uh, a big data appliance, uh, but you may have challenges uh, using it uh, uh, for uh, for a pilot. It could be pricey um, unless you use the software-based or cloud-based editions of uh, Teradata Astaire appliance. They have th those one as well. Now, uh, process data cheaper, not sure. And static or continuous analysis uh, uh, of data, that's one of the main benefits of the data warehouse solution. And uh, yeah, so let's see what's up with hardware storage only solutions. So we're taking a look at uh, data direct networks and quantum. What's, what's, what is this all about? So uh, looking at data direct networks uh, solution, it's kind of science fiction, IO performance, something really imaginary, I think. So a singular um, unit uh, can provide 40 gigabytes of, uh, for second um, capacity and then 1.4 million uh, flash-based uh, I operations. But if you stack up uh, 25 and, um, units and then use uh, fiber channel, infinity, um, infinity band, 
uh, you can get up to one terabyte a second processing power. That's very powerful. Okay. Uh, Quantum has its special uh, additional feature uh, which you may be interested in. It can support huge file size and also huge amount of files. And you need to know that big data, when, once you use big data, uh, what you used to uh, have as uh, tables and records uh, instances is turned in, into files. So this is actually a transaction turns into a file in Hadoop. So you can easily get millions and millions and millions of files just because you have millions of transactions. You need to have support for a large amount of files on a single file system. And, and this is one of the things that Quantum allows. And um, it also allows for direct access through, of course, fiber channel and, and, and so on. Um, uh, for many operating systems, which means uh, if you have Windows or Solaris or Linux, or whatever they support, you don't need to uh, take care of, of uh, in the interfacing with uh, the HDFS uh, um, file system. Uh, so it lets you, oh, excuse me, you don't need to uh, take care of all the um, what it means to deal with huge file support and huge amount of file support. Uh, so wh whatever the operating, the native operating system does not support, Quantum will provide you, uh, as far as I understood, with uh, the, the specific drivers and software to allow your current operating system have many more files and with a big uh, um, size. Okay. Um, now, Hardware uh, storage solutions, uh, quick and simple setup. Yes, once you get the, the hardware set up and running, uh, quick and easy uh, updates, and then easy control of one of many instances. It's part of, uh, I guess, uh, what the um, hardware uh, storage management uh, uh, suite allows for. And then simple infrastructure requirements, not so, because you have specialized hardware once you have it, it's simple. Uh, um, okay, reliable and very, very quick as you saw. Okay, uh, how does the hardware storage appliance uh, do perform uh, uh, as uh, a simple big data appliance solution? So, can do some of the job requirements, but not most of them as in other cases. And you have special uh, exceptions uh, it, uh, you know, many of the functions that big data appliance can do are software-based. Uh, this one can't do because you need to have the software that actually performs Hadoop. You get only the storage with this kind of solution. Uh, now, running a pilot to verify big data is worth the effort may be too costly for a pilot if you don't have this kind of hardware. And process data faster, cheaper maybe, not sure and uh, lock-in prevention you got it because it's only the storage it's not uh, in, can you replace the storage if you want to now cloud-based virtual machines and hadoop engine so we're talking about amazon elastic map reduce and google compute engine let's see firstly we're going to talk about uh, amazon uh, emr uh, which is the elastic map reduce it's a cloud-based virtual machine. So it's a virtual machine running in, in Amazon data center, similar to AD, the AWS, uh, but it's, uh, you know, uh, MapReduce is already included and running inside this virtual machine. You, know, you don't need to set it, just configure it. Now, cost-effective, as always with, uh, with Amazon, it, it, it depends on how much uh, how much uh, you use this. Uh, if just for a short while, can be very, very, uh, um, very cheap. If it's, uh, if you need it uh, for the long term and continuously, you may need to look at other solutions. Uh, so it includes Hadoop software, such as uh, MapR. And uh, if you use the MapR solution, actually, that we mentioned earlier, 
it also it already includes all the uh, uh, special file services which are software based like snapshot and mirrors and going back in your map our uh, uh, process if you need to now uh, so you can easily add or remove uh, nodes of course and yeah how do I integrate uh, excuse me and you have uh, high availability integrated into Amazon S3 so all all the storage you're using will be uh, preserved uh, and uh, you've got also Hadoop HBase database inside this uh, solution so you can query it using SQL like language okay now uh, a quick look at uh, Google's uh, computer engine uh, special features it was released uh, just a uh, short time ago and um, the specific the highlight is it's based, based uh, on CentOS which is nice and then uh, various uh, you, you have various disk types so you can all of them of course are encrypted but basically you can have your uh, disk space die when the the virtual machine uh, dies or powered off you can have it persistent and then it can be shared among uh, across other uh, uh, instances of uh, of Google's um, uh, virtual machines, and you have snapshot uh, support. You also have a, an option for a disk, uh, a cloud-based uh, disk, which looks like similar to Amazon S3, where uh, as in the persistent uh, um, disk, uh, they claim it's running on the data center. So you basically probably should have in, in the persistent uh, um, uh, disk type you should have uh, high performance while the cloud-based maybe not so not so fast uh, is it cheaper than Amazon it may look like so but I'm not sure uh, how it will uh, turn up on on the long run okay now uh, so uh, it's quick and simple setup yes and updates, easy control of many instances, all part of what Amazon AWS, the basic Amazon AWS provides. Uh, no delays doing its job, it's, well, you have to see if it really works for you and it's also dependent um, on, on the kind of uh, storage, uh, using the buckets, um, and so on. So, um, okay as a big data appliance it can do most of the job requirements okay amazon emr now there are several exceptions uh extend your existing data warehouse okay so it's actually kind of putting your data warehouse in the cloud which can be done but requires uh some work on on the security and privacy front ends and the operational front ends as well so not sure you can do it very uh well uh run a pilot yes very good for running a pilot for big data and then uh, process data faster or cheaper it depends of course as usually with the Amazon you need to look carefully at what you're doing and how much you're doing and static or continuous uh, analysis of data I'm not sure if you can easily do continuous analysis of data uh, maybe if you use map R and not just uh, EMR the basic one if you use map R included into Amazon EMR then you may have this kind of uh, um, uh, streaming uh, analysis of data through map R's NFS implementation uh, NFS slash HDFS implementation now turn operational data in, into assets it's the same challenge as uh, the data warehouse uh, okay so cloud-based API with uh, hooks to Hadoop. It includes Google App Engine, MapReduce, and uh, Microsoft Big Data via Windows uh, Azure. So Google App Engine, MapReduce. It's an open source. It's still, um, um, it's still um, kind of beta. Uh, it can process uh, data store entities and blob files. That's what they claim. It's probably uh, Google Cloud Storage. Basically, you don't need to uh, care about uh, storage uh, as you do in other cases. <laughs> I'm back here on the air and thank you for uh, uh, staying here. So uh, Google App Engine uh, MapReduce um, uh, basically 
you don't need to care about storage uh, too much. Um, you just run, you create your application in Python or Java, you run it, it's still experimental, but it's, uh, it still allows a look into the future, a possible future where you don't uh, uh, implement big data, um, uh, you know, uh, considering virtual machines and, and infrastructure and so on, you just create your application and you run it. And you can add more uh, threads or uh, reduce them if you want to go faster or slower as you process this. Now, it does the job basically. Um, it's very nice, uh, reliable, maybe not so much right now, but maybe in the future. And uh, uh, but then here are the lags, data warehouse, it's still cloud security issues, uh, possible issues and uh, process data faster and cheaper, not sure about the pricing. And uh, lock-in prevention, well, code is open, of course, but you may get into, uh, uh, you know, getting dependent on the process and then lock-in. Uh, Microsoft uh, Big Data, it's basically uh, 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 basically an ODBC uh, connector that allows you to tie Microsoft Office and other applications to an Hadoop Hive. Uh, similarly, you can uh, connect SQL Server using a Hadoop connector. Um, and but, but it's kind of similar to data warehouse provider solutions because it's not clear exactly where and how Azure Cloud implementation goes into this um, yet. Which big data appliance should you use? So the questions you want to ask yourself is, is about, uh, you know, um, look at the job to be done. The 11 uh, items I mentioned uh, when we started, what is the job of uh, big data appliance? And then look into where are you in this process and what's your goal? So which pieces of the puzzle do all already have? You have storage, you have data warehouse, whatever. What are your constraints? What are your long-term and short-term goals? And always do me a favor, always start with a pilot, if, especially if it's your first time. Okay, challenges, pitfalls, and winning the big data game. So you can't get much of big data if you don't know how to dig and find useful insights. Uh, you need the same uh, capabilities uh, that you uh, need to have uh, when you run a, a data warehouse uh, solution. And yes, commoditization of the data warehouse is actually what's happening here. So you'll, we'll have more players and more innovation. Now, you can't make use of, of uh, big data appliances and big data in, uh, altogether if you lack the innovative, quick, agile abilities to really turn the direction of your organization and respond on time to what you discover. Uh, so you need to take care of privacy and security. And uh, if you pay cheap, you need to manage all those instances. If you pay cheap for you know hardware, big data uh, warehouse vendors embrace Hadoop, but it feels still vague in some cases on how it's going to progress. Okay, we're nearly out of time, so I'm sorry, uh, um, I may not have uh, time to answer questions, but you can take a look at the slides here, uh, where is all this leading you to, and I'd like you to rate the webinar, if you will, download the resource attachments for future use, register to my channel on Bright Talk, and spread the word. Have fun with your big data, big data and enjoy life. Uh, let me see if ca I can still uh, answer questions. Uh, will the slides be available after the event? Will the webinar be available on demand? Of course it will. And, uh, and uh, uh, you'll have it through the attachment links for this webinar uh, and you can use it. Now, uh, reminder. Um, and thank you very much. See you later on on the future webinars. Bye-bye.